Salam, brothers and sisters. Greetings to the listeners. This is Wyndham J. And this is the first, this will be the first video of the Rastafari historical series. And we will be beginning this series with the black Jews of Africa, history, religion, identity, written by Edith Bruder. Okay. And before we get into the introduction, I just wanted to show the eye in them. Uh, a map of Africa's Jewish groups. This is very interesting. Okay. In Mali, we have the Zakor. In the Cape Verde Islands, we have the Israel Friendship Society. There we go. A little better, uh, more clarity there. In Ghana, we have the House of Israel. In Nigeria, we have the Igbo. In Cameroon, we have the Israelites. In the Congo, we have the Baluba Jews. Down here in South Africa. Okay, down here in South Africa. And Zimbabwe, we also have the Lemba. And in that Lemba, which doesn't state here, we also have the Buba, which were the Levitical priests of Muse. In Zimbabwe also, we have the Jews of Rusape. In Madagascar, we have the descendants of David or Dawit. In Rwanda and Burundi, in excuse me in Rwanda and Burundi we have the Tutsi Hebrews of Havila in Kenya we have the Nairobi he Hebrew congregation and in Uganda in Uganda we have the Abayudaya and of course in Ethiopia we have the Beta Israel the Beth Beth Abraham of Kashin. Okay, so that's just a map of the historical Jews in the continent that we know today of as Africa. Now let's get into the introduction here of the black Jews of Africa. Okay, lost tribes in the 21st century Africa. Just a quote from Sigmund Freud. Mm, I wouldn't really be quoting him, but unless there's some validity to it. Uh, okay, let's begin. Over the last hundred years or so, aside from the well-known case of the Beta Israel, Falasha, the so-called Jews of Ethiopia, different ethnic groups throughout Africa without any specific link between them have started claiming a Jewish or Hebrew or Israelite ancestry. Synagogues have been formed spontaneously in Western, Eastern, and Southern Africa, while various African groups proclaim that they are returning to long-forgotten Jewish roots and trace their lineage to the lost tribes of Israel. The, these forms of identification not all of them strongly connected or indeed connected at all with the Jewish religion have created a loose African network of apparently Jewish groups that together constitute a new kind of African Judaism. Some are reworkings of biblical theology. Others are the direct or indirect results of colonial interventions. Some of them are derived from local or tribal traditions in search of a different form of the groups in question, excuse me, them are derived from local or tribal traditions in search of a different form of expression. The groups in question are located in different African countries. I refer in particular to the Zakor movement of Timbuktu in Mali the Igbo of the Igbo of Nigeria, 
the House of Israel in Ghana, the Tutsi Hebrews of Rwanda, the Lemba of South Africa and Zimbabwe, the Abba Yudaya of Uganda, and others who claim Mutetis Mutandis, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, to have a Jewish identity in radically different ways over time and place. Part of the intellectual background to this 21st century discourse is an age-old fascination with the lost tribes of Israel. Every aspect of the history and the very existence of the 10 tribes is no doubt fraught with controversy and epistemological difficulty, as the late Stanford Lyman observed embedded in the esoteric history of the Judeo-Christian civilizations of the Occident, the lost tribes continue to play their occasionally recognized and always intermittent role in both the praxis of modernity and in its postmodern epistemology. Interest in the subject has come to some extent been triggered by recent events, not least the worldwide concern that the departure of the Beta Israel from Ethiopia to Israel generated in the 1980s and 1990s and their subsequent history in the Jewish state. The exodus and the recognition of the Ethiopian Jews, identified as the Lost Tribe of Dan, have led to an interest to similar lost tribes' identities, lost tribes' identities, developments in other parts of Africa. Tudor Parfit and Emanuela Trevisan Semi consider that the implied universalism in such a construct has had the effect of stimulating a wider discourse in which the idea of universalistic Judaism has been prominent, with the exception of the Rusape Jews in Zimbabwe, the Abba Yudaya in Uganda, and the Lemba in South Africa. None of the African groups considered in this study identified themselves as Jews before the 1980s. Alongside the Ethiopians' entry into world Jewish history, the Lemba, the Lemba of South Africa initiated a new web of ethno-histories and made up a wider myth of affiliation to an ancient Jewish diaspora. The process leading to the emergence of African Jews was underway. <clears throat> This book addresses the elaboration and development of Jewish identities by Afrikaans. Afrikaans have encountered Jewish myths and traditions in mul multiple forms and under a number of situations. The context and circumstances of these encounters produced a series of influences that gradually led within some African societies to the elaboration of a new Jewish identity connected with that of the, of, of the diaspora. The purpose of the book is to review the processes and the immensely complex interactions that shape these new religious identities. It explores the ways in which Africans have interacted with ancient mythological substrata of both Westerners and Afrikaans' idea of Jews in order to create Jewish identity. It particularly seeks to identify and to assess foreign influences and their internalization by African societies in the shaping of new African religious identities. While these subjects are given detailed insight in the text, this survey does not intend to provide an exhaustive view of the wealth of the varied and dynamic religious experiences in motion 
among African Jews. It rather offers a network of theoretical suggestions for a more thorough understanding of them. Because Africans had so many explicit and implicit exchanges with Judaism, this book draws on concepts taken from ethnography, phenomen phenomenology, history and history, religious and cultural studies. Recognition of the critical role of colonialism in shaping the relationship between Africans and Judaism has broadened my vision of the continuing effects of the continuing effects of colonial and neo-colonial intervention in Africa. The role and effect of colonialism on these groups also situate this work in the framework of subaltern studies, but only marginally. When religion does receive scholarly attention, writers or academics generally tend to focus on mainstream groups and denominations. By contrast, the object of my research is the study of a micro situation, what Carlo Ginsberg names the paradigm of the clue. Ginsberg pushes beyond the simple clues of historical evidences to tease out the information embedded in them and he challenges us to retrieve a cultural and social world that more conventional history does not record, as he demonstrated with his study of witchcraft. It must be said that the number of people involved in these African groups is, broadly speaking, in insignificant in terms of the overall African population. The groups in question constitute a marginal phenomenon that may be seen as historically irrelevant. Moreover, due to the dynamic nature of religious shift, of religious shift, they are almost impossible to assess. In its broadest form, I consider socio-ethnic history, socio-ethnic history to be a focus on groups whose general contribution to the broader history of a society has usually been ignored. Recent advances in the study of culture, as Renato Rosaldo has observed, have encouraged analysts to look less for homogeneous communities than for the border zones within and between them. Such cultural border zones are always in motion, not frozen, for inspection. By exploring the ways in which Africans have identified with Jews ethnically and or religiously, this book challenges existing Western racial ideas on what constitutes Jewish identity and ethnicity. The Black Jews of Africa raises basic questions about the meaning of Jewishness, but it does not purport to be a book on who is a Jew. The Jewish identity theme and the essence of belonging to the worldwide Jewish community have a long history embedded in controversy about race and religious issues in general. Due to the two distinct definitional standards at play in the Jewish community, religious and... Excuse me here and ethnic, there has always been a tension between the conflicting aspirations toward universalism on the one hand and particularism on the other. Over the past few decades, scholars from a variety of disciplines have in increasingly questioned the existence of a race as a meaningful scientific concept. If there is no race in any biological sense of the term, it is obviously rather meaningless to state that Jews are not a race. For instance, in the myth of the Jewish race, 1989, Raphael and Jennifer Patai forcefully argue that there is no genetic, physical, or biological Jewish specificity. Ephraim Isaac insistently 
asserts that uh, asserts that Jewish history is filled with interracial and intercultural mixing and that the popular vision of a single Judaism does not reflect any historical period. Quote here. Over 2000 years ago, the Jews were an ethnic group, but even then not a perfect one. The ancient Israelites were not a racial unit but a sacral association called an app an app facitioni if i'm pronouncing that correctly there am 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 chioni not pronouncing that correctly called an amp amp chioni by some scholars they were a they they were a people bound together by a common language and common territory, similar historical experience, and common consciousness. Racial categories are, according to a growing consensus, socially and culturally constructed and the result of a, of a variety of ideological and political factors, not a biogenetic category, but an ideology embedded in and expressed through specific relations of power, unquote. However, within the body of Judaism, the belief that continuous descent from the patriarchs is the sign qua, is the sign qua non of Jewish identities continues to survive alongside and in contradiction with claims of the essentially non-racial character of Jewish identity. From the 20th century, the emergence of Jewish religious movements from Africa to Asia turned the generally accepted views upside down and expanded the debate. If groups of African Americans or Africans or Asians who were raised as Christians or Muslims or in traditional religious religions, traditional religions declared themselves to be Jews and formed new communities, did that make them Jewish? In the United States, long established communities of African Americans have been practicing Judaism for more than 150 years. Some of them have Jewish heritage, others identify with Judaism. Some have converted to Judaism and others are connected to Judaism through marriage or extended family. Chero and Dush stress that the identification of African Americans with and especially as Jews expands the parameters of this debate and highlights the issues of race, race, ethnicity, and self-definition in determining who is a Jew. African Americans and Africans understood and experienced the Jewish religion as they did for other religions and their own terms. For the African peoples under study who identify as Jews, identification with biblical Israel assume some symbolical significance with almost totally ignoring the physical characteristics they identify themselves as sharing a common descent with the members of the contemporary jewish community when identifying as jews and with other jews they deny the existence of distinctive categories in popular concepts of jews and subvert and subvert the racist image of blacks their self-definition lies in their collective historical and cultural experiences that have led them to assume a shared history with the Jewish people. The entry or re-entry of these people into religious consciousness as Jews has necessitated a reshaping of the standard accounts of Jewish history and a rewriting of each group's version of its history. As Stephen Kaplan notes about communities of exotic Jews 
their narratives take on a cir circularity. Since they are Jews, they must have particular par they must have excuse me participated in a shared Jewish history. Since they participated in this shared history, they must be Jews. Africa's great ethnic and cultural diversity is combined with an equally complex religious scene. African Jews' recent religious identities were shaped by their participation in Christian, Islamic, or traditional African religions. Moreover, many African groups and individuals that identify with Judaism also consider themselves to be Christians, Muslims, or members of African-based religions. Within the confines of this book, however, enumerating all the connections that have an impact on African Jews' relig religiosity did not seem possible. Rather, I hope to illuminate one thread in the medley of race, ethnicity, and religion in the African religious experience. The book is structured in three parts, each examining a different sequence of the genesis of African Judaism. The first part explores the prehistory of African Judaism. The emergence of an African Jewish identity appears to draw on a very long history. For thousands of years, myths have accumulated about the presence of of Jews in sub-Saharan Africa, directly, but never very directly, and indirectly, sometimes very indirectly. <clears throat> these mythic elements have played a role in the development of these communities. The myth of the lost tribes of Israel is one of them. The Solomon and Sheba legends, the issue of the biblical children of Cush, and the mythic representation of Ethiopia and Africa in the Western imaginaire or others. It was essential to include a treatment of this mythic prehistory from which the reader may draw the necessary information to better understand or comprehend or somewhat overstand the current manifestations. The second part reveals the variety of interactions between blackness and Judaism from prejudices to reality. In chapter five and six, special attention is paid to the Western representation of the racial promiscuity between Jews and blacks which became commonplace in the 19th century and has on occasion been adopted by the early 20th century anthropology. This part explores mainly the process of identifying and inventing Judaism in the new world and in Africa by colonizers, which enabled local people themselves to get to know and have access to this religion. The impact on traditional societies of European missionaries and early eth ethnographers, recognizing all sorts of similarity between ancient Judaism and primitive religion is questioned. Chapter seven focuses on the theories of Afrocentrism that provided the theoretical basis for Africans to appropriate the Jewish history. By trying to restore the primacy of African influence of the world, the Afrocentrist ideology has established a link of connivance with the most remote ancestors and asserted that Africans were the true original Jewish race. Following the history of these political texts, this part considers the precursors of African di diaspora identification with the Jewish di diaspora and the subsequent and the subsequent roots of African excuse me with the subsequent roots of African 
Judaizing Judaizing movements Special attention is paid to African American Jewish movements The symbolic role of Judaism In the religious imagination Of the Hebrew Israelites in Israel And the Rastafarian movement in Jamaica Is also examined the third part reveals the historical background of Jewish traces or influence in Black Africa. Although direct sources supporting a Jewish existence in Sub-Saharan Africa do not exist, several sources indirectly testify to the antiquity of a Jewish presence, in particular in Western Africa or to a Semitic presence in southeastern Africa. Based on these elements, this chapter provides a historical content, context for attempting to reconstruct the most ancient Jewish or Semitic influences on sub-Saharan Africa or to evaluate the extent of mythical realities in chapter 8. Chapter, chapters 9 and 10 provide a survey of various African groups that self-proclaim the Jewish identity and examine one by one the creative elaboration and development of their recent religious identities. This part explores how most of these societies work toward the construction of a mythical genealogical connection from the lost tribes that would justify their claim of ethnic as well as religious Judaism. A section of this chapter assesses the impact of genetic research on group identity claims and the view of such claims by others. In the epilogue, we turn to an overview of the, cat of the catalyst for change. This final chapter examines the intricate ta tapestry of cultural, social, and political factors that could have led African religious traditions mingled with Christianity and sometimes with Islam to be superseded by a new Jewish cultural identity. Following Marseille Iliad, who states that the most important task in the study of religions is to decipher the deep meaning of religious phenomena, I shall suggest some hypothesis of the meaning and the benefits that these groups derive from their affiliation with Judaism. Of course, the number of topics to which I could have devoted attention in this section would fill an additional volume. I hope nonetheless that these considerations will stimulate future debate. Okay, so stay tuned for part one prehistory on the lost tribes of Israel. Salam.